The Jags pride themselves on offensive versatility, but I think they need to ride with their horses. Just a few of them. Talk about that today on Locked on Jaguar. You are Locked on Jaguars, your daily Jacksonville Jaguars podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another edition of Locked On Jaguars, where it is your team every day. We thank you for making us your first listen. I'm Tony Wiggins, the host of the Locked On Jaguars podcast that you can find wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube at our YouTube page. It is called Locked On Jaguars. Of course, today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet five dollars and get a three-week free trial of nfl sunday ticket from youtube and youtube tv visit fanduel.com to get started what up to the everydayers for joining us every single day you know the rundown let me get to it right now we're going to end up talking about one game at a time i know it's cliche but i mean it because you can't be having all of this baggage that you're taking up to buffalo and houston or wherever you you're going thinking about what what got away what could have been we don't need to be worried about could have been shout out to my man drewski this ain't could have been records we need to focus on the future in the middle we're going to talk about how everyone is right and how that is a problem and this is to the fans this is the people that we interact with every day here on locked on jaguars and on social media that think that they know the singular solution the problem is there is no singular solution so Everyone is making real good suggestions. I'll break that down and tell you why that's problematic. And now we go to the very top of the show where we have to identify the best weapons. And what makes me think about this was a critical point in this season for me so far was the Miami game where the Jaguars went into halftime ahead. I think it was 17 to 7. Yeah, they were up. We got the ball in the second half. I was very, very encouraged by the end of the first half because they got the ball with a minute left to go, and guess what they did? They went bip, bip, bip down the field with a minute to go and got in the field goal range for Cam Little, and he hit a long, long field goal, right? So I'm sitting there thinking that, well, this is great because this scenario is the one that the Ops, which was the Miami Dolphins at the time, they didn't want that. They didn't want them to score going into half knowing that they got the ball. In fact, they actually tried to run the clock down as much as possible, but it didn't work. The Jaguars got the ball and started the second half. And here's where they did something. And I've mentioned this the other day. Here's where they did something that I believe, while it didn't cost them the game, I do believe it shows you the mentality that they have that I think probably hinders them more than helps them. The first two people to touch the ball in the second half were Tank Bigsby, who had had a really good first half, by the way. He had. And then... It was Parker Washington, who had had a really good summer, right? Had a really good summer. Um, when you think about them trying to establish an identity, when you think about them, when you think, and I'm lost for words here because I want to make sure I say this correct way. I believe teams should be versatile. I believe teams should have layers and layers of players that they can come at you with. We talked about the Dolphins. They do it. They bring the people like A-Chain and Mostert and um, all of their receivers. And, and they'll hit you with, you know, John O. Smith. They, they, they do all kinds of stuff, right? My issue and my problem is, is the timing that the Jaguars decide to do it. It feels like they're trying to show you how nice they are. You ever watch somebody play basketball? They get 30 points, but they spend the whole time just showing you how, how they can cook the guy in front of them and they don't win. And he can say, well, I got 30, it wasn't me. It, it, it just seems like I think there's been so much talk and so much pressure on about the offense. And it's it might be paralysis by analysis. Like you go in and you come up with all of these plays, these things that you want to run. And not paying attention to the fact that early in the game, your rookie wide receiver went up against a future Hall of Fame corner and acted like he didn't care. Why did we not go right back to, I would have, there would have been another deep route. Probably the next time I got the ball, I would have ran Brian Thomas Jr. right past Jalen Ramsey all over again. 
a guy texted me during a college football game this year, and the, the college football game was Florida State getting their brains busted open on on uh, Labor Day night by Boston College, coached by Bill O'Brien. They ran two wheel routes in the first quarter for huge, huge games. I got a text from a guy who's a Power Five coach. He said, you know they're going to keep doing it, right? That's what the NFL does. They run it till you stop it, and he's going to use different formations. And then they proceeded to run like nine more wheel routes and Florida State couldn't stop it. I'm thinking that when something works for the Jaguars, why do they not do it again? Why are they not repetitive? Why don't they have the attitude that we're going to do this again until you stop it? How come I see plays that work and then you don't even see those plays again or the action? Maybe not the exact same play, but the intentional action to get the ball to certain people. I've said this all along. I'll say it about offense and I'll say it about defense. If your second team deserves to be rotated with your first team, then you better be the best team in the world. Or your first team guys better not have that big of a difference in salary and commitment than an expectation than those second team guys. I'm all for getting everyone involved. I'm all for giving them different looks. I'm all for all of that stuff. But I'm also for something else. I'm also for establishing an identity. And I don't know if you can establish an identity with so many people poking their face into the camera. I think what you need to do is lead with your best. I guarantee you, if your best is working against them, before your best gets tired, the opposition will get tired of dealing with them before your guys get tired of being out there. I really, really, really want and need for this team to get an identity. And I think the only way you get a, con a consistent identity, the best way to approach that is to use your best players over and over and over again. If you're going to have limited possessions, I want – the, and that's the way the league is going league-wide now. I don't know if y'all noticed, but these teams are running the football. Guys aren't throwing the football as much. Buffalo, who we play, and you can catch the crossover tomorrow. We play Buffalo Monday night. Josh Allen only has 43 passes, 43 pass attempts. Trevor Lawrence don't have much more than that. The difference is, first week it was Tank Bixby. He had a little bit more hitching his get up, it seemed like, than Travis Etienne. And that may have been the way the Dolphins were playing it. That may have been a part of the Dolphins game plan and Tank caught him by surprise. Then the next week, Tank gets hurt on a kickoff, right? And you go to Dearness Johnson, who does some good things as a change of pace. I want the depth guys to be change of pace guys. I don't want the depth guys to be dudes that are getting design plays called for them coming out of halftime. Now, I know it can all be explained, and we'll get to that in segment two, by the way. The fact that Every single thing can be explained and can be rationalized and can be done in a very, very convincing way. But all I'm saying is I don't rationale doesn't score you points. I'm an idealist. And I want, if we're going to have limited possessions where we got 60 plays or less, I want to make sure that the people on that field are the people that I have used the resources on or that I have the high, highest expectation for to be the team, the players that either get us home or they don't. You win and you lose with your primary players on the football field, with pressure being put on the opposition with your primary players. And I say that on offense and defense. I think resting people is overrated, especially when the other team doesn't really do it that way. And you're losing. And I'm saying this out a little bit of desperation because I want the Jaguars to win. I don't want them to continue to lose. But if they lose, I do at least want to be able to point to the people and say, well, no, it's him. No, it's him. No, it's him. Or he ain't ready for this or he ain't ready for that. I don't I don't want it to be a situation where we lose the game and our and our best players are standing over there and like, man, it wasn't me. I don't know what's going on. Because there has to be a difference between who your best guys are and who your next group is. And at the end of the game, at the end of the game, if they're not dead dog tired, then they didn't play enough. And I know it's a long season, but you got to win these games one at a time. 
You got to win them one at a time. The first game isn't to preserve energy for something that might happen 17 weeks from now because you might get fired. Play your best players. Lead with your best players. Those are the guys that are on the field. Run the plays that they run the best and wait until you get a chance to put those other guys in to change it up. You have to go with your best players. All right, I'm going to tell you in segment two why everything is right and that's a problem and an issue. I'll do all of that in just a second here on Locked on Jaguars. Got to let y'all know about DoorDash, man. If you don't know, because I told you a long time, for a long time, ever since 2020, I've been talking about DoorDash and exactly how professional they are when it comes to delivering the goods, right? The food always comes on time. It's always hot. And it doesn't matter whether it's a chain store or one of my favorite neighborhood pizza places or sushi spots. DoorDash is so available and they are always about their business. I always deliver with DoorDash. I'm telling you, deliver with with DoorDash or powered by DoorDash is the greatest thing you can do, especially without a Monday night game. You're going to work and don't want to cook. You make sure you call DoorDash. Now, look, promo code is locked fall 24, locked fall 24 for 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order. Limited time offer, terms apply. The promo is not valid for orders containing alcohol and alcohol is only allowed in certain markets. So make sure for your weekend and your Monday night food orders, you deliver with DoorDash. And I got to let y'all know about FanDuel, man, because FanDuel is still and has always been America's number one sports book. And it's where I go to have a lot of fun. Now, the Jaguars happen to be 0-2, but I am 2-0 and on FanDuel. And I put some Skrilla in my pocket, and you can do the exact same thing. But they've even got something better now uh, going on right now for you. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday Ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with the YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out of market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel anytime. It's important that you know this. The Jags always, the games always come on here on local TV, right? But when they don't play in the same time slot every single time, there are other games that you can catch for your fantasy football. And if you're a Jacksonville native and you're in the military or living out of town, you might need this and make sure you tap in when you go to FanDuel.com. All you got to do is visit FanDuel.com and download America's number one sports book between now and September 22nd. All FanDuel customers, all you got to do is bet $5 and get a free three week free trial of Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. All right, segment number two here on Locked On Jaguars, where it's your team every day. We thank you for making us your first listen. Everyone's right, and that's an issue. That sounds a bit oxymoronic, if you will, but it's true. And this is more about my engagement with people and fans and other members of the media that are trying to figure out what is exactly wrong with the Jacksonville Jaguars. And what I hope it kind of helps, I kind of hope it sets y'all free a little bit, but I also hope that at some point somebody in the building may think that, not by listening to this, but they come to the realization on their own that, you know what, there is a lot going on here. Let me get to why I said this. At the end of the year, well, I'll go back to 2021, when Trevor Lawrence was drafted, there was a get Trevor the ball and just get out of the way attitude. And I said that that was a mistake that you have to fortify him with all of the things that makes a quarterback very, very productive, good coaching, good infrastructure in the personnel department, build that offensive line, that fortress around him. So he could operate without pressing, get him weapons on the outside, and get a complimentary defense on the other side of the ball that can get people off the field on first down and that can help with whatever identity you want to have offensive. Last year, after the end of the season, everything was about, and I'm going to bring this name up, and this ain't nothing against this kid, but it was all about Jackson Powers Johnson. Remember that? 
Jackson Powers Johnson. The Jaguars got Mitch Morris. That didn't need to happen. They were proactive in that. The Jaguars drafted Brian Thomas Jr. There are a lot of people that were a little disappointed in that draft pick at the time that are probably eating crow right now. They wanted someone else. In fact, I asked Trent Baalke the night of the draft that if they had signed Calvin Ridley, would they have gone in a different direction? He said probably so. So they kind of backpedaled into what might be one of their three or four best, most talented players on their roster. So sometimes you get lucky like that. I want y'all to think about how many times they didn't get lucky, though. How many times did a poor decision lead to them missing out on something else? And what that does is, if you myopically approach this situation where you're just singularly focused on one thing, like Jackson Powers Johnson, and I'm going to say it like that because people wore me out with that in the offseason. What if you don't get him? But what if you still get a center, a replacement at center, that is pretty good, and that's what Mitch Morris is. It didn't solve all your problems, did it? When you start thinking that everything, every problem has a singular solution, you set yourself up for disappointment. When you want to be right about what you think is the worst thing, that's fine, but don't think it's the only thing. Like, we need to get our guys healthy on the offensive line. You see where I'm going? Yeah, they did need to be healthy. Doesn't mean they doesn't mean when you get them healthy, they're going to be good enough. Why chance it? Why chance it when you have the opportunity to add more? I like Mason Smith. I like him a lot, but this team had had needs. The team already addressed defensive tackle the year before by extending both Roy Robinson Harris and Devon Hamilton. At best, Mason Smith was going to be a rotational player for two years. And then you got Jordan Jefferson. And oh my God, wait a minute. What did you do even before the draft? You signed Eric Armstead. Mason Smith was a healthy scratch in week two. Probably has nothing to do with his ability, but has everything to do with the fact that they're loaded with bodies. And not one of the guys that I mentioned caused him to be inactive. It was two more people. It was Ledbetter and the other kid that they've been having in development that I keep screwing his name up. So this is the problem for me. You can't run the team like a scout. And I know Trent Baalke has a scouting background, but at some point you have to be bigger than that. Everybody's right about everything. When people call me and tell me, or they hit me up on social media and say, it was just ETN drops that ball or, or doesn't drop that ball or Christian Kirk catches that pass early in the game and we get an extended possession, we probably beat Miami. True. Cam Little doesn't hit the upright in the, the last game against Cleveland. It's the tie game and the Jaguars are within a field goal, so there's no desperation to get down the field real quick. That's true. In the first game, they threw the ball. They didn't throw the ball enough. Why did they only throw it 21 times and you got a $250 million quarterback? True. Last year, they were throwing the ball too much and weren't running the ball enough with enough balance. That's true, too. They probably threw it too much against Cleveland. That's true. The pass rush was non-existent against Cleveland and was better against Miami. That's true. They're missing too many tackles in the secondary. That's true. Travis Etienne, he made the fumble. And then Tank Bigsby got hurt in the second half. And then they had bad play calls that they almost missed. They could have hit a big play to Britton Strange if Gabe Davis makes a block. That's true. If they just hold on to that block just one more second while, Travis is in, uh, while uh, Trevor's in the end zone, that slant and go that – Brian Thomas Jr. Ram is going to be a 95-yard touchdown or a 98-yard touchdown. That's a maybe because Trevor could have still missed the throw. But in any event, all of those little things could be true. Everybody could be right about all of those things. And I'll declare to you right now that that, my friends, is the issue. That it isn't one singular thing that's causing this team to be bad. It's a whole bunch of little things. 
If you drop a penny, would you pick it up? Probably not, especially me with these bad hips. If I drop a dollar, a dollar bill, not change, a whole dollar on the on the ground, will I pick that up? I probably will because of the way I grew up. A dollar is still a dollar. The difference is, is if you make a hundred mistakes that are real small, like a penny, guess what it ends up to? A dollar. So my point is, is while you're all right, the issue is everybody has something that they can say that they think is is the reason. Don't live and die on that hill, though. And the reason why is because just when you realize that it's not just that one thing, that it wasn't just Luke Fortner, now your disappointment has grown because you got slapped upside the head and re you realize you were just hoping for one thing to end something that isn't caused by one thing, it's caused by a whole bunch of stuff. And that might be the biggest indictment on the team as to why they can't get an identity. I think they need to reduce all of those things that they're dependent on and just focus on the real good players on the team and ride with them until you get a lead and then start sprinkling this other stuff in. I don't know. That's just my take, but I thought I'd give a little bit of energy to everybody on social media that I disagree with sometimes because I'm not necessarily just, and especially in the comments on YouTube, I'm not disagreeing with the thought of the thing that you're saying. I'm, I may just sometimes be disagreeing with thinking that that one thing or that one thought is going to change the big picture in its entirety by itself. Because that's what the organization continues to do. And you see, every time they fix one thing, something else pops up because there's more going wrong than you guys think. All right, we're going to focus on how you leave the baggage where it is and focus on one game at a time. That's what the Jaguars have to do at this point. We'll talk about that in just a second here on Locked On Jaguar. Today's show is brought to you and sponsored by Game Time. That's right. Ain't no time for procrastination, man, but it is time left for you to get tickets even when you're late. Now, let me explain. Game Time specializes in last-minute ticket purchases. To any event you want, whether it's a game, uh, a play, monster trucks, whatever it is, man, you can get tickets at game time. And ain't nobody going to be mad at you for being late because game time absolutely specializes in that. All you got to do is take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use the code locked on NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Now, terms apply. Again, I'm going to tell you how to do this create an account. And redeem code. I'm going to spell it for you. L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-F-L for $20 off your first purchase. Download game time today. Man, what time is it? It is game time. All right, third and final segment here on Locked On Jaguars, where it's your team every day. We thank you for making us your first listen. I know where your second listen needs to be. That needs to be Locked On NFL. That's right. I'm telling you, man, you got two shows every day. First, the Madman Tyler Rowland kicks off your morning with a double shot of NFL Espresso, and then stop by the barbershop with me, Tony Wiggins, for some real NFL talk. You can take me out to the barbershop. Can't take the barbershop out of me, right? Find Locked On NFL on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. Now, one game at a time. We have been talking about the baggage all week. Ever since the postcast, we've been talking about the things that are going wrong with this team. They have a game to play. And if they aren't careful and they don't leave some of these negative thoughts and the baggage of the things that happened, like the way the game ended um, in Miami, the way the game started and then ended here against Cleveland. The press conferences, the second thoughts, they have an off day today. And I hope everybody's kind of decompressing and they're loading up because when you get to Buffalo, ain't nobody going to feel sorry for you. You got to go out there and you got to be doing more than hoping and wishing. You have to go with the intent that you're going to win this game, right? A game that will be previewed on our Prize Picks crossover show tomorrow with Joe Marino. I have that posted for you at midnight for your enjoyment. But prior to getting there, they have to make sure when they get on the team plane that the only thing that goes with them is their intention for this game and not what has happened in the two previous games. The coaches have to have 
a sense of this is a fresh start. This is a new opportunity for us to show who we really want to be. The only way your identity is going to change is if you change it on the field. And the only way the way people feel about you will change is if you change that opinion based on how you perform. When this game Monday night against Buffalo, there will be confidence not only from them, but from everyone around them. The entire feeling would be y'all can go win in Houston, too. Win the next two games against those two teams that are both hovering around the top six, top seven in most power rankings around the league. Now you're two and two and you got a fresh start in a new season. The only way that's going to happen, though, the only shot you have is to make sure that you don't have any baggage. And baggage could be trying to use that stuff to fuel your motivation to do well this year. Or this week. Don't worry about it. It can't help you. All it can do is get you knocked off, knocked off your square. Because you might find adversity in the first drive or two here. And then it's like, oh, God, here we go again. No, that's only two drives. You got the rest of the game to finish. We can have skepticism. And we can be sitting here saying, uh, same old Jags, this, that, and the third. And. I'm done with the season. All of the things that I've seen on social media that I know is a lie, because as soon as that game kicks off Monday, everyone who says that stuff is going to be glued to the TV. We hope that what we see is a team that isn't thinking about what happened the last two weeks and is just looking forward to putting on a, a display of something else. Hopefully that that's what happens. If it happens, I'll talk about it here on a postcast. If it doesn't happen, I'll talk about it here on a postcast. So which one is going to be? We'll hear about the crossover. We'll hear all the keys to victory tomorrow from Joe Marino. Until then, you guys make sure you tap in the Locked On Jaguars and then Locked On NFL, both editions of Locked On NFL, and make it your second listen. All right, until tomorrow, man, I'll talk to you later. Take care. Be safe. Enjoy the rest of your day. And thank you for tuning in to Locked On Jaguars.